So the next part for exercise 2e talks a little bit about function notation. And we're going to say a little bit about this, but we will go into it a lot more detail in year two maths. So a function is something which provides a rule on how to map inputs to outputs. And you will have seen at GCSE that functions were a formal way of describing a number machine that you probably met in primary school. So you have an input x, which goes into some function machine f, and you get some kind of output like 2x. So how we actually write this is we say that the name of the function we put outside, we put an input inside some brackets, and the output is what happens to that input number. So in this particular case, the function is a doubling function or multiplying by two. Now we're looking at quadratics, so we'll have an idea of what our functions are going to be here. So as I said, you'll cover functions extensively in future chapters, but for now you just need to understand the following concepts. So there is this idea of the inputs of the values are called the domain, and it says that the domain of a function is the set of the possible inputs. And you can see our function here is a squaring function. It's taking an input x and it's producing x squared. Minus 1 is going to 1, 0 squares to 0, 1.7 squares to 2.89, 3.1 squares to 9.61, etc. And we use this word range. The range of a function is the set of the possible outputs that we've got here. So let's just have a look at this. It says the domain of a function could potentially be any real number. And if so, for this particular case, we could say that the input x, this weird E shape means is a member of, and this very fancy R letter is the real numbers. Now the real numbers are every number that you can think of from like normal maths. Everything between infinity and minus infinity. It includes zero, fractions, decimals, thirds, all of them. The way you write that R is you just do a capital letter R and just draw an extra line through it like this. So it says here we might be interested in what inputs x give an output of zero and these are called the roots of the function. We're often interested in what things give us an output of zero and these are called the roots of the function. This is the most important part from this slide that we've got. The roots or zeros of a function are the values of x for which the function is zero. We use this word roots more than we do zeros. So it's basically saying, when is the function equal to zero? What is the domain that gives you a value in the range of zero? So let's have a look at this applied with a particular example that we've got here that uses some function language. So we have two functions. We have f of x, which is x squared minus 3x. And we have a different function, g which is just x plus five. And it's got this little information here that just says that the values that are getting put into here, x, are members of the real numbers. In other words, you can put any numbers into this function machine. Part A of the question says, find f of minus four. Well, this actually means you're taking minus four as the input and you're putting it through this machine. So it would be minus four squared minus three multiplied by minus four. So minus 4 squared is 16, and negative 3 times negative 4 is 12, so we get 28. Part B of the question says find the values of x for which f of x equals g of x. Well, I'm just going to do what they've said. I'm just going to make f of x equal g of x and see what I get. So that's x squared minus 3x equals x plus 5. So getting it all onto one side, that's x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. That looks like it's going to factorise to x minus 5 and x plus 1. So the values of x are 5 or minus 1. So those are our two values for part b of the question. Now part c of the question, it says find the roots of f of x. This means that f of x is equal to 0. In other words, x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. So I'm going to factorise, or I could use my equation solver, but I'm going to take out an x, so that's an x, x minus 3 equals 0. So this tells me that either x is equal to 0, or x minus 3 is equal to 0. In other words, my solutions are x equals 3, sorry, x equals 0, or x equals 3. So when it talks about finding the roots of f of x, it just means make f of x equal 0. And we'll do the same for d. It says find the roots of g of x. That means that g of x is 0. And remember, g of x is just x plus 5. 
so x plus 5 equals 0 or x is equal to negative 5. So just a little bit about that new language of roots in this particular stuff that we've got here. We're going to keep going and do some maxima and minima in just a second.